And now I will switch into Spanish. And on that, I would like to introduce myself. I am Nora Sibirin, Technical Advisor for Latin America on the program Global Alliances for Social Protection from GIZ implemented by this agency. And today we have, uh, I will facilitate this third presentation of this series. In this series, I would like to, we would like to share knowledge, lessons learned, and practical tools regarding application of strategies, policies, and integral interventions of social development designed to reach families and children at an early stage. Across all these experiences, we will pay special attention in the coordination and implementation of the local strategies. Today, I will share with you the experiences from Uruguay with their sectorial program of uh, early childhood development. This is part of the series and will underscore the accompanying family program. The first presentation of this series was held on September 19 and was focused on the experiences of civil society of associations on Kilo de Ayuda from Mexico and experience from Brazil. The second presentation was on September 26 and was about the strategy of early childhood development, Primero la Infancia, from Peru. The next presentation is scheduled for November 28, next week, where the Ministry of Social Development from Chile will present their program, Chile Crece Contigo. So without further ado, I would like you to begin the webinar. First, I want to present the agenda. We will begin by a very brief introduction. Then we will have the presentation from the Ministry of Social Development of Uruguay under program of family accompanying under the framework of Uruguay Crece Contigo. Valeria Gradin and Veronica Pandolfo from Vides will present from the Ministry of Social Development. And I will briefly introduce Valeria. She has a B.S. degree of sociology on Universidad de la República and has a postgraduate study in a specialization in family and systemic psychology from the Catholic University of Uruguay. She has worked in several programs of direct attention to early childhood and families and also in the technical area of infamilia of the social development ministry and also in the program of Territorios para Crecer de Uruguay Crece Contigo. Currently, she is director of this division and the focus on this webinar depends on her office. Then Veronica Pandolfo, she has a BS degree in nutrition by the University of Republic, a postgraduate studies in pregnancy and early childhood. Veronica participated in the design implementation and monitor of public policies and family intervention. She has been a professor of her alma mater, consulting of UNPD and FAO in different projects. Since 2012, she works under the framework of family accompaniment and closeness work, and she participated in design and management of a universal strategy of Uruguay for benefits and universal attentions in early childhood. Then, after their presentation, we'll have our analyst, Gabriel Corvo. He will share her co complimentary comments to this presentation. So I will introduce Gabriel. Gabriel Corvo, sociologist by Universidad de la República with postgraduate studies in economy, marketing, and management of development organizations. Currently, he leads the area of early childhood in the National Integrated System of Cuidados del Uruguay. From the Planning and Budget Office, she has worked as coordinator of projects linked 
to early childhood and young years for the UNPD and OIT. She has also worked for international bodies, domestic and international, like the IBD, Mides, and others. After their contributions, then Gabriel Gorbo will have a 40-minute session for questions and answers. So please ask your questions in the chat during or after both presentations. We will read the questions across the, the session uh, to our presenters, and they will answer in Spanish. And to listen to the question in English, you have the simultaneous interpretation services. In case we don't have enough time for all the answers, we will post the answers in the web platform socialprotection.org later. So we will appreciate if you ask clear and concise questions because time is of the essence. And finally, we will conclude this webinar with a summary and conclusions, if we have time for that. So without further ado, I would like to begin with an introduction on this topic, policies and strategies that promote comprehensive development in childhood must consider the fundamental role families play in the creation of a healthy environment that are warm and stimulating. Specific activities as family accompaniment through house calls are important to promote the main behaviors in the matter of health, nutrition, as well as to create awareness on the consequences of shortcomings in the development of early childhood. Following this context, Uruguay leads with an intersectorial strategy in order to build a system of comprehensive protection for early childhood. The outcome is to guarantee comprehensive development of boys, girls, and their families, beginning with protection of pregnant women from a perspective of rights, equality, gender equality, social justice, and human development. The program Uruguay Crece Contigo has changed their conception towards the needs of their country. And as we heard from Mides, it completes consolidation this year, a structure that allows uh, all the working areas addressing the challenges that imply this outreach in families with boys and girls between zero and four years and pregnant women, and at the same time deploy specific strategies to address situations of greater vulnerability. The objective of this webinar is to present Uruguay's experience with a focus on their family accompaniment activities implemented under the framework of Uruguay Crece Contigo program. And now I will ask Veronica and Valeria to present their presentation. And as I have told you, uh, as time is of the essence, please keep your time. You have approximately 30 minutes. Having said this, we can begin now. Thank you. Good morning. It is a pleasure to be participating in this international presentation. So, as a context, as you know, Uruguay, it's a South American country, relatively small, considering our neighbors. Our population is approximately 3,400,000 people, and this population mostly lives in urban settings and has had an aging process and 5% of our population is for boys and girls between zero and four years of age. So before presenting our family accompaniment program, these are some landmarks of Uruguay's public agenda. Uruguay has strengthened this agenda and the proposal 
programs addressing early childhoods, and we found some landmarks in this timeline, as can be at the end of the 80s, in the implementation of the CAIF plan, which is in Spanish Centers for Attention of Childhood and Family. This has had an important reform in centers then in 1989. 89, 30 years ago, we have the Convention of the Rights of Children. We are celebrating our 30th anniversary of that in 2004, the Code for Childhood and Adolescences. This had the rights of early childhood at the center. And in 2005, the Ministry of Social Development was created under the context of an important crisis of our country and in the public agenda. Then it was shown the relevance of to address the critical aspects in population of extreme poverty, which is really important to address this in early childhood. So we developed an attention plan. Then later on in the, those years, in 2007, we have huge reforms in order to have more possibilities in terms of distribution equality, as well as the tax reform, the health reform, and also a continuation of the equality plan, generating more protections for childhood and adolescent years. Another important item in 2009, the National Strategy of Childhood and Adolescent. It was a plan across the government. And in the same year, it is where CCC, UCC Uruguay Crece Contigo, in 2012, a domestic, a nationwide perspective. I must say that in this experience, the importance of Canelones government, which was, it was a departmental government, and copying some local and international experiences as Chile Crece Contigo, and they decided to approach situations from uh, since pregnancy and early childhood, every aspect involving health and nutrition regarding the goals of the program, family accompaniment, with the possibility to come closer and work close to the families across their daily lives. Since this had a positive assessment of Canelones Crece, then the central government expanded this into a nationwide program. So in 2012, Uruguay Crece was added to generate proximity programs following the logic of the time where important progress and development was achieved in the matter of economic growth, but where population is vulnerable, it needed focalized attention addressing most particular situations and in Uruguay Crece Contigo, we address biological, uh, social, and cultural aspects. Then in 2015, we implemented the national system of care and then the strategy later on of non-intentional pregnancy prevention in recent years. Uh, this has decreased thanks to this work. So this was just uh, a context, a background context for our timeline, mainly the program of family accompanying under the framework of all this structure to strengthen the social matrix under the framework of a country that wants to place early childhood as an important item in our agenda. So being specific to the program of family accompaniment, the objective is to promote 
childhood development in the first early childhood with a territorial approach underscoring equality of opportunities uh, in pregnant women and in boys and girls zero to four years of age, contributing the construction of healthy environment, promoting physical, social, and emotional well-being of families, promoting sensible ra child rearing practices adjusted to the needs and rights of boys and girls, facilitating access to services and benefits of the state. The operational aspects that we want to underscore in the design and implementation of the program, Uruguay Crece Contigo has some modalities, and one of them is household chores or the meetings in their daily activities and that we stress this attendant care for women that have been deprived from their liberty. Uh, there are medical conditions also, and it is very important to be able to reach to the most vulnerable population to take care of this specific condition, such children that are with their mother in uh, prisons or so there's a specific accompaniment that right there that it will take into account that area where they are enclosed and facilitate the exercise their rights in spite of being under that the private of liberty condition. Another thing that has to do with the care of hospitalization, there's an agreement with uh, some of the public hospitals under the frame of the service to give public health care, and then specifically under those circumstances, we are working with support materials, and then in turn, we have a specific care for persons trafficking this works in Montevideo, and there's an agreement with the Department of the Bel Human Development that takes care of this violence conditions, particularly with migrant through women and children. And finally, uh, an additional uh, way of working is group work and multi-family work, particularly on workshops with pregnant women groups of families that could be in agreement with along with other institutions of care, like uh, organizations that are committed for well-being and that are in different territories and that take care of that accompanying conditions and that could be added to other programs and that could reach multiple families. Next, please. Within this specifically family accompaniment at home, there are two ways that are referring, as I was telling to the families that have pregnant women, and they have to reach some goals to accompany pregnancy, and then all things that have to do with uh, parenthood, and then there are specific conditions when women that already have children under four years of age, and I, when I was saying we prioritize or care for children that are less than one year. This work carries is carried out for a period of one year, approximately. As a means. The coverage so far, uh, we, since the program started at the domestic level back in 2012 until August 2019, we have reached a coverage of care for eight. 15,590 households where we have 8,732 pregnant women and 24,920 children 
out of which 60% are less than one year. Then we also work with family accompanied with 48,717 direct beneficiaries of those families and given the benefit to 82,369. Well, very difficult to see that this is a very high coverage that we have in Uruguay if we compare it to one that to the one that we used to have in the past. Um, deployment at our regional level, territorial level, as I was saying, we are with in the direction of Uruguay growth with UUCC, um, then uh, the territorial uh, division that enables us to deploy those teams on the territories. And then we have the facilitators There are the ones that are at a territorial level are the technicians that will be doing the coverage of different departments, whereas they will be supporting the organization of family accompaniment. And above all, a regard of articulation with other institutions in their territories and where their actions refer not only to family accompaniment, but also to universal actions that are being deployed in agreement with others and that is a fundamental role to cover actions that may have impact in other population sectors. Then we have the technical work carried out by supervisor, fundamental role they have to play of technical uh, advisory um, and the operators are the one uh, is the core because those are the technical workers that are be encountering each family we have other experiences and the way we organize our work and then they have this in dupla they have two technicians, most of them are women, uh, quite women-oriented driven work, and then we have generally one, a discipline that refers to health, professionals, and nurses, and other technical one that refers to the social area, psychology, social workers, and educators. Working together is very important to, to fulfill these goals because goals are referring to this two universe of issues that have to do with comprehensive health and the development and in child, early childhood. And in turn, in intensity has to do, as I was telling you, a process that reaches a line of work. And in encounters of these visits can vary in having encounters at the beginning that can be on a weekly or be weekly basis and that will be delayed in time and where we have an average that can be monthly. And when in addition, we have a much frequent uh, reference uh, by making phone calls. Going to the different stages of family accompaniment, we have an entire process of work that it is very important since the beginning articulations with other services and programs that have been installed on the territory. We depart from the thinking that we have to have a postulation that has to be carried out by other services, social and health, that will be identifying family that have vulneration of rights or some other indicators that have to do with some health or risk that are present during pre pregnancy and early childhood. And then they analyze these conditions um, by the supervisors, and there on we can start to see a process of assigning each team according to the conditions that they are covering and the schedules and hours that are available for the technicians to go and visit the families. And then in this even a range of scope that are feasible, we can take care of 30 or 40, and then we have a permanent uh, care, and then we have that coverage in place. That is the role of supervisors to see how many 
conditions or families we can take care of. One that the, the condition has been selected, and then the team comes close with this previous report, and they can see a better coordination with social services on the territory. And then we invite the family. It is very important then that tell them that this is on a willing basis. Most of the families accept and they come on board and they are accompanied through the entire process. One that the stage has started and the demand and follow up and accompany until the closing. In the entire process, it is fundamental, this work that is coordinated with the networks and it is a invitation that will be creating a bond As I was saying now, criteria of onboarding, we do the evaluation of some risk and health hazards. And then we see the pregnancy in the first year of uh, age because we have to detect them very early because impact can be the very important at that age. So the sooner we are there, the better. Next, please. In uh, the concept area, all this material will be distributed to you, and then in, during the Q&A session, we can go further in detail. But as I was telling you, we're talking about a work we have a family accompanied with our regard on the universe of the family. It's very important gender perspective here. We must take into account if there is a presence of a man, uh, we can have co-responsibility of houseworks and the, the take care of the diversity of families. There are some uh, uh, protectors of the entire family that can be the grandparents, and then they can, those ones can facilitate that parenthood, uh, betting for the development of the strength that can be found on families and advisory that will be strengthening the practices of those reference uh, adults and uh, promote childhood development where there are inequalities on the structures. It is very important to take them into account. We have family members when we get close, there can be a teenager pregnancy and there can be a pregnancy that is an outcome of violence or abuse where it is very important to have a gender perspective and protection perspective, life cycle, and try to work with uh, other specialized bodies on the different issues on the territory to facilitate protection and better to guarantee, uh, guaranteeing rights. Well, those are the course of our work where the empathic bond and the construction always respecting what the family is integrated of and working together with other specialized bodies is all about. Well, as I was saying, uh, this approach is social and educational one where we will be working with other institutions and other sectors. And here we have the role of networks. We have had in this recent years a fundamental bed in order to strengthen the matrix of social development or normally on education and social services. Here we have this offer that we can find in each territory and the possibilities that we have in the margin of actions with the public offerings that is present and care, health care centers and reduce the number of conditions of violence and establish a dialogue a, having an approach to individual and then universal and then receive the families and then when we withdraw, they can keep on working with them. We have signed some agreements with the comprehensive health care where there is not a sufficient 
menores de tres años. For children care under three years of age, we have a such a program where we will be financing habitat and then we have this inclusion, whereas they can have a continuous education with public services. The strategies have been looked for in order to strengthen and include them in different programs and services. We know there is a limit to that, but in populations for housing, work, special care on mental health are some of the challenges that the country has to face with vulnerable populations. And this the specific program will enable us to identify and link them onto the matrix of social protection and development. Next, if you please. And then, the, here we have the quality of intervention, uh, permanent training for the teams. We will be talking with Veronica in relation to the materials and support that it is provided and technical supervision, as I was telling you. And the last aspect that we have to develop, and then we'll, we can extend if there are any questions, that under registration we have forms that will be accompanying this stage of family accompaniment. In this form, very briefly, we can say that we are making some measurements at the beginning on the baseline, and then we reiterate them at the end in order to view the results that we have obtained and when we are improving indicators that have to do with the goals of the program that we can extend and if we have to be according to the measurements that we have carried out like we have the household incorporation of the development of those forms and we have a new tool that has to do with a home scale and with a parenting that trying to reduce violent practices of uh, parenting, and then uh, the use of uh, violence, immunization with children. Everything that has to do with nutrition and access to the healthiest uh, uh, feeding, and then uh, registration in the schools for children and access to the benefits and services that have been developed on the territory for public care and monitoring will be providing an indicator and they lead us to see that we have a good progress on the program and the last image that I have to show to you is showing that in addition to the evaluations that the registration is asking us to do we also carried out an external no one that is carried out by the university, comparing with groups that have been accompanied by family accompanied program and the control groups, we saw a real difference and improvement on the access of work that had been considered on the program that has to do with nutrition, emotional condition, and access and to social and income programs. So we have found that this uh, has been untimely uh, action and these are all the tools. We have all the tools and Veronica will be telling you about those support materials for teams. Next. Good morning. We wanted to share with you some of the supports that we have to offer to this family that are on the family accompanied program. Uruguay growing with you has been a great had a great interest to reach all families of Uruguay, as Valeria was saying. The amount of birth that we have in our country are very few. Uh, last year, less than 41,000 children were born. Maybe this year we'll be reaching more or less 40,000 or less. It is something that worries us very much because of the low uh, childbirth that we, rate that we have. But now I will be telling you about the different tools that we have to offer. 
Bueno, ahí está. Ustedes ven este, There you have este it. Bolso que you can see the bag that contains eh, all those uh, materials. This is what we call the universal set. This is a welcoming eh, set that all families eh, will be receiving of the children that are born in Uruguay. It contains two types of products. Uh, materials that are headed for adults that, that have uh, topics on nutrition, on breastfeeding, among other topics that will be improving care time on the families in Uruguay. And then it contains other type of materials. Uh, Uruguay's Growth with you that has to do with the importance of reading, playing, and reading from adult to child, creating a bond. And that is why you see a book for baby from the moment of birth and music for children. Until last year, we gave them a CD when they told us that they didn't have a record for CD player, then we tried it to give them music through a um, QR code that can be downloaded to the web and then they can hear the music at home because of that lack of um, CD players. Now there's an entire process when we have started to see it and the members of the family will have more time to read and prepare themselves for the challenges that they have before them. And also we have two publications that for all are really important. One is the guideline of the good beginning or a great start. This is being presented through health services and the teams of Uruguay Crece Contigo when women are pregnant. And it has all the information regarding uh, games, emotions, and uh, preparing for childbirth. And it joins all the pregnancy process. Then we have another presentation. Uh, we had it in the past, and now again we are reassessing it through health services and education services. This is for families that already have children or they have the, an important need for care as preemies or if a baby was born with a disability. This uh, publication is not addressing an, a specific issue, but rather how the family should across all this process, both publications for pregnant women or children born with disabilities are for any family as they need. Then we have a specific materials, as Valeria was saying, to strengthen specific issues. Here uh, you can see the pictures, what we call the kit for women, a set for child rearing support, a backpack, the, a bag that supports for childhood care, and warm clothes for cold weather. You can see that in the picture. That first, we have a nightgown, the sleepers, and personal items, uh, products. These are for families or for pregnant women when they are soon to, to have a baby. And also in health services for those women that by some reason, if they were not able to bring their personal belongings to the clinics. And this is presented in the clinics. Then uh, in red, we have a cover all for babies in public in public uh, clinics or hospitals for children that are coming with the families for their mother to have a baby. And then the child-rearing support 
kit, which are ludic and other items for supporting the the family. It has a training cup, a thermometer, a mat, some games, a pad for changing a diaper, and also material to support in the development. Then, across all this time, we developed what we call a safe sleep strategy, trying to reduce the risk of sudden death of lactatings and other causes of child death related to sleep or related to asphyxia. And we have developed a series of creeps that are given at different times. The the red one that is closed and then open, this design is for Uruguay. We call it Bajacuna. It is designed for birth to six months of age, designed for those places. When you ask the family, where will your baby sleep? They say, well, uh, on the bed with the mother, with the father. So this box crib can be a place for the baby, and it also is a barrier to prevent asphyxia by crushing. And when we present this cajacuna or box crib, we present uh, an advice presentation uh, preventing asphyxia. Also, if there are smoking adults, we recommend not to smoke when the baby is at home. The other two cribs are presented and given in the program of family accompaniment if the the apartment or the house has a place for these scripts to be placed. Another aspect, and this is to complete, another aspect that Uruguay Crece Contigo has developed are these open or closed public spaces uh, approaching and addressing early childhood. This is across government levels. And in every public space that is designed, there should be these locations dedicated to early childhood. And yes, this was the last presentation. And this is the link for you to see the video. This is a very brief five minute video that summarizes our presentation and will give you further clarity on our ideas. So, on behalf of all of us, first I want to thank Valeria and Veronica for your presentation, thorough and enriching. And briefly, you can ask your questions in our chat regarding the presentation and also for Gabriel Corvo's uh, comments that are next. And now I want to introduce our analyst, Gabriel Corvo, that will add complementary ideas and reflections based on this presentation. Gabriel, you have the floor. Hola. Hello. Can you hear me, Nora? Yes, I can hear you perhaps a bit low, but I can hear you. And now, hello? Is this better? Okay. Well, thank you very much for inviting me with our colleagues and working mates that after listening to them, well, I heard about the history of the creation Uruguay Crece Contigo, so I would like to underscore in my time four aspects that I think were important for the creation of Uruguay Crece Contigo and somehow today 
show us that this program is embedded in the domestic policy of early childhood intervention with very positive results a very positive experience. So I would like to highlight four aspects. One is a decision regarding with political economy. The second aspect about the vision of the, lo the location in the domestic uh, policy of this home visiting or family accompaniment program. The next one is the institutional space where it was located and then institutional or operational aspects important for Uruguay Crece Contigo to be as it is today. So the first one, political economy. Something our colleague says is that Uruguay Crece Contigo was created in the mid 2012. This is important because Uruguay has a management system of every five years. The government began in 2010, and at the early stages of that government, Uruguay Crece Contigo was not planned. So it was designed in the middle of government, and their Uruguay's government budget is in periods of five years. So these was a complex decision. So the government considered to work with a series of focal interventions addressing the poorest households and families in our country. And they considered the possibility to have a program to act on 20,000 families of small age children that presented complex conditions. So this was the discussion of the design of Uruguay Crece Contigo, and they decided to work with the most vulnerable sectors. But Uruguay Crece Contigo needs a vocation to intervene in universal policy, and this was complex, and the right decision was as it was, that Uruguay Crece Contigo had the vocation to collaborate in the construction of a protection system for early childhood. The budget energy, the organization energy, 80% to say a figure, was for home visiting. The vocation was that this home visiting has the vocation to intervene in universal policy. So this was translated into the construction of dif different articulation spaces in 2012. This had a lower interest. So Uruguay Crece Contigo rekindled these spaces with ministries linked to these and different bodies related early childhood stages. It created working commissions. I coordinated one for education and care. And many things that took place today are part of the domestic reality. Also, there is an important call that whatever happens at the level of families, what we see in our focal work, solutions, solutions are related to the motion of social policies. So all these family issues are a question to the protection systems. This was good on all the basis for the work of Uruguay Crece Contigo. The second aspect related to this is the decision that 
these could not be a pilot program or a work for only some territories. It had to be deployed as a domestic policy. And as we saw on the video, in just one year's time, this program was deployed nationwide. So we needed to train teams to reach every corner of our country. And amongst various things, we started by the statement that Uruguay already had had a pilot program, which was the experience of Canelones Crece Contigo. So if we wanted to work and have greater impact, we had to make sure that the program will reach fast across the country, across every area. This has operational conditions, and this will be the last step that I will mention. Regarding the outreach of every corner of our country, that was an important decision leading to this. As we have seen from our colleagues, the families that enter this program have a double risk condition, which is sanitary or health and social conditions. The combination of these two aspects are important for designing the operational work and understanding that the first one statement, the solutions of these health and social complexities are linked, and part of these solutions are not only solved through home visiting, but this home visiting program needs to link to the protection system. Also, to add transparency uh, on how to enroll in the program, an important decision is to have a monitor and assessment system since the beginning. This was really important. Please consider that in general terms, people, operators working in these territories, they like and then they enjoy to be working on the territory. So they had to have those documents and this. We have the same about plan in Uruguay. Every children has a computer. And those uh, operators went for a computer, the ones that the children have at their school. There they have a monitoring system and they could load the data that enabled that in a very fast way. Mm. Obviously, there were some uh, difficulties at the beginning, but we could have effects and results and data very, very quickly and make decisions and correct very quickly some of the difficulties that came about. Having a monitoring evaluation systems since the onset that had been scheduled before going into the field, I think that was a very important factor. This enable that Uruguay Crece Contigo, Uruguay's Road Review, was deployed in the entire territory and had data right away. The third thing, as I was saying, a political economy, universal coverage that we were aiming to have, and that re relationship between with the po universal polity and the car work carried out, and the thing that this is a domestic uh, level program. And third place, where it is located? Where could it be? What could it be? It could be at the Ministry of Health, where it, it could be at the social development, where we can find it today. But at that time, that first decision of having an aim of universal uh, coverage uh, that had to be governed by different institutions and that had a very important political weight. We made the decision at the time, quite complex to take, but to place it at the presidency of the Republic. Highly criticized action, however, as we would say, but nowadays we realize that it was the right decision to make because we have placed it beyond some of the facilities. It was really visible 
the importance that we granted to it and enable it to call for a spaces of articulation that I, as I was saying a moment ago, had been weakening at that time. The fourth aspects are decisions of operational nature or management, if you like. Those uh, management decisions have to do with all the other decisions that I've just mentioned before. Uruguay, Ross with you, has a approach of being an universal system and give protection, its management and work is in the territories. We will be showing you an image that was shown by Valeria, and we see the structure. The majority of the colleagues that are working on UCC are the ones that are located on the different territories. We had a very small central. At the beginning, it didn't reached 10 persons, but the ones that were scattered around the territory were around 200. We need to have cap capability of showing data, but if we wanted to reach the entire country and do it fast, we needed to intervene where we had to be, that is, participating directly with the families under the structure that Valeria showed us during her presentation. The second is, who are the operators? A political decision that was very important and very good at the time is that we need to invest. Different people would ha could have been chosen from different ministries, but we decided to hire people and two or three decisions that to my point of view, were the most important ones. A great majority of those decision people hire were young people because this work demands a lot of energy, health, and people with a vocation and willingness to pull forward. Is go and encounter the issues and people. And uh, generally speaking, you need young people to do that. This work has to be well paid. Uh, the, the decision to pay this work and the fees, professional fees, had to be good. And that was important because normally when we design policies, the people that are working on the territories normally are paid lower fees than those that work at the central system. And here we looked for giving good incentives for the people working at the territorial level. And we had to compare with other family accompanied programs. It's a particularity that we can understand. The people that are working on the territories are professionals. We made uh, calls for participation to professionals where thousands of people participated. But the criteria of uh, reference terms was they had to be professionals. If you want to have well-trained people reaching the household, then you have to pay for those. Though that was a very important political decision that was made at the time. Management decision is that family accompaniment had to be undertaken by couples, one with a social uh, background and the other one with health background, precisely because of what we were mentioning a while ago. Families come because a double condition, health and social, and an articulation condition between social and health that has to do with the protection system that let Uruguay crece to contigo to reach them. So Uruguay grows with you forced or invited to establish a dial on the practice and the reflection and decision-making process. Other thing that is important in how we accompany these couples, uh, the other main decision was we should not establish offices. 
and that at our operational uh, level is very important. We have a lot of people that are on the territories that visit the households, but at a certain moment in time, they have to have a place where they can sit down, share, breathe. So where are they located? We were looking for articulation of this universal uh, reach. The offices could be from the Ministry of Health, from the Ministry of Development, of the different intendancies that are the offices of regional governments. But we didn't create an office of their own. They had to be out on the street and, yes, have a place to meet. And this is important normally on the countries that decide to go out because normally we're thinking where we will be locating the offices, how we will be creating the central office. And I think uh, that, that this uh, learning is very important for UCC so far. Uh, the mobility of the uh, teams is of concern. If you want, want to reach a domestic level, you, some things you can do it by public transportation or walking. But if you want to be efficient, you have to define their mobility teams, have to move around in different types of vehicles, maybe bicycles, motorcycles, cars, but it is of great difficulty and concern if we are to reach the farthest away places, and normally poverty is found exactly there, far away from the cities. So the fact that this program was placed at the presidency of the Republic Office beyond all those difficulties that we uh, could face, we looked for mobility solving because it was very important to have uh, more mobility rather than offices. It could be bicycles, but we needed to identify how they would be moving, or teams would be moving around. Other thing that had not been considered that to my point of view was important that, that we keep on learning from is the security of some of the team members. In some territories, there are citizenry um, security issues. Yes, we could make important decisions as the teams were dressed in um, color identifying shirt. That is an important decision. So the people at the different towns will identify and see them. And among other things, that is a security um, measure uh, decision. But if you want to reach wherever you want to reach, the security issues are important to be taken into account. Trial and error, many different strategies were put into place at what time uh, you should be at certain neighborhoods, certain towns, if you should be accompanied by somebody else. But that is part of life. Those are difficulties that we keep on learning from that had not been considered from the onset uh, stage. But if there are colleagues of other countries that are thinking about it, maybe you can consider it from the onset to see how you will be solving this security issue. And the other thing is other decisions that were at the onset, but they were improved within time, have to do with the teams. Uruguay Cuento Contido wanted to have professional, well-trained teams, young people with a lot of enthusiasm and willingness. This is a process that leads you to be on an ongo ongoing learning process. And sometimes reality uh, it's difficult to face. UCC created a series of training programs. Uh, they're telling me that I, I have no more time left, so I will be wrapping up. 
So the exchange, uh, training for the teams, keeping them in touch, uh, this is something that UCC had been creating throughout time and improving in the designs and learnings, but that is an important aspect to take into account. You have to take care of your team, and that is essential. Being in front of different conditions and situations sometimes can be depress, depressing because not all solutions are, are available for the operator at the right moment. So keeping safe these teams is highly important. This has been a key issue on UCC that we have been learning within time. And the colleagues that will be working on this, it is important to consider it from the onset. Because of time, I have to conclude, otherwise my colleagues will pull my ears out. And I am at your disposal for any questions that you might have for me. Thank you so much, Gabriel. And I hope that we have some time left in order to go in depth in some of the aspects. Thank you for your comment. That can be quite general overall political willingness and very specific and how to take care of the operators teams under the program. Maybe we might have some questions, but I want to ask uh, our audience to forward their questions. We have received some already. I will read a couple of them that are coming from the SERS person, uh, Elena Dominique Reasibistri, that is asking, how do you monitor, how do you carry out the monitoring in the program and how do you evaluate the quality of the program? Maybe you can answer both questions at a time. Thank you. Thank you for your interest and for your question. As you were saying, we are available even to send additional information if somebody wants to go into further detail. In monitoring, maybe I went too fast, but there is an image, number 15, on my presentation where we detail the flow of the forms and the system. We must clarify at first that the system, uh, that registration is an IT registration process. We are improving it at the moment, and we will have a support that it is the same informatic system that is being used by the Euro One state and the Ministry of uh, uh, Development and the Institution of Social Protection Bank that gives all those pensions and family benefits uh, regarding the quality of information that include uh, we they are reserved and the force of Uruguay grows. Only Uruguay Crece has access to that data regarding the population that is taken care of, how, how are the whole households in our system other social problem of the ministry can see if the household is not receiving that care. And that is very important. So no, all programs are addressing the same family in order not to overlap them. UCC uh, gives them um, an application form, and that is a very important step because in addition to registering them and knowing how that family is integrated, that form enables us to have a faster access to the benefits or program that they will be eligible for. So the team goes with uh, the forms either at the beginning and at the end. 
with the benefits of the program and all the devices for remote connection. This is provided to each team along with the backpack and with all uh, materials and at the spaces where they have to go to, they have a specific hours where they can register. So they have initial form for pregnant, for early childhood care that uh, respond to certain indicators. We work a lot in having scales that have been validated at a certain moment in time will enable them to compare them to other programs. That is why we have incorporated the home scale recently, and we worked with a professor in Argentina to provide elements that has to do with this baseline and the end line, and how is the climate, the atmosphere at home, and because we also ask questions with that we make to the children and the adults being present in order to carry out the accompaniment for those children. At the scales, we work with several indicators that can be put in place that respond to quantitative issues, control numbers on health, on the pregnant women and the child, and a specific weight and height and continuous health care, if um, immunization is up to date or not. And we are working with the contributions of nutritionists that are working on the program and other groups. And there's, we can see and figure out which are the most appropriate tool in order to adapt them to that family accompaniment. There's nutrition, child development, a company for pregnancy, and other social access to education, health, that are covered at the beginning and at the end. Within the system, there's also a um, roster, and then the teams will be registered who were present, how that visit and accompaniment a specific visit to place, who were present, what topics were dealt with the family. And that has to be much with the quality part uh, for the follow-up that that couple of professionals will be undertaking while working with the family, but also with the follow-up undertaken with the institutions, because with the review and the improvement of the issue, we will be clicking and making a graph. If they have a scholarship of care or a housing benefit, or maybe an extraordinary benefit because there is a child with difficulties for learning, it will enable us to monitor not only the process that we have with the family accompanying program, but also with the articulation with other sectors that are involved within each territory. So in order to keep on seeing the progress made through family accompany, we will also have relevant information to work with the different sectors, particularly those that are, don't have sufficient uh, uh, demand. The registration, yes, we can make it much more specific with a specific scale. And in relation to your second question that has to do with the quality of intervention, there we have another uh, toolkit that has to be with intervention, that is supervision. There is a technical accompaniment, and supervision is quite important there to provide guidance. We have a series of documents that make the protocol that are under a process of improvement, and that in order to provide better guidance, there is very difficult to incorporate concept framework. Uh, social educational process, the construction of a trust bond, which is a specific per family. There is a tool that last year we wanted to incorporate that it's called HORSE because of the acronym in English. 
home visiting writing scale, a tool developed by UCLA University in the United States. We incorporated this as a scale, as a tool that will support supervision at some point, the look and guidance before the work of every couple will be used as an outlook and some indicators that indicate the interaction between the couple and the adults of the family visiting, between the couple and the children of the family, and the relationship between the adults of the family and children. And these indicators lead us to think that we are working from this location, which is not of control, not to lose rights, uh, perspective, gender equality, including the adults of the family will carefully and empathically place these guidances that will help them in their child rearing practices. So we recently incorporated this tool, but it will help us to think about quality in these terms. Perhaps this is the way it is. Well, yes, thank you very much. And now I will read a question from Natalia Yukon that it's link to monitor topic, a specific question, and it says, how often do you issue monitoring reports? Perhaps the more formal reports. And then perhaps we can have one or two topics on groundwork. Please, uh, please make your answer brief. Well, there are several reports, as I was saying, since there is a lot of information that teams record, supervisors and facilitators can request specific reports that will help us think how follow-up is, how a region is behaving with all these moving indicators and think about other strategies that can be complementary of family accompaniment. It can be monthly, yearly reports, uh, depending on the agenda and the coverage per department, macro indicators that add to the general memory of this development. There are different levels, some reports that support management uh, specific to it and then general reports. So in short, since last year, this was, uh, May was considered to be the month for early childhood, so May uh, it's an important month. Gina, the director and report and monitor, can elaborate on this, but we will contribute a series of reports uh, are specific for May as an input to feed all the management process for home visiting. It also feeds other actions because early childhood is vulnerable uh, and also childhood across uh, as a general topic across our country. Thank you very much. And now another question is how intervention with families take place. These are are these standardized or individualized interventions? Now, Jacqueline Velasco wants to know, I would like to know which adjustments would you make if mothers were illiterate and what about remote and high in the Andes region zones? Well, as you know, we don't have geographical accidents, however, Families that are in urban environments, there are an important number of these families in the metropolitan areas in the capital city, Montevideo and in Canelones department. However, we still have diverse situations in our country and some situations, depending on the volume, the number of cases of families which are in difficult to access, remote and rural locations, and as Gabriel was saying, transport is difficult, so we need to be able to reach to 
remote locations. Even when in our country we do have utilities coverage, there are very remote locations that don't have easy access to these services, and mainly road access and how we can, uh, how they can come closer to other communities. We have even given economic support so they can have a uh, pay for the transport and have access to other services. And also, depending on the school level or education level, if they have completed some some grammar school degrees in Uruguay. Also, we have situations of deficit in writing and reading skills. And perhaps Veronica can tell you more on this. In the materials that we are bringing, we are supported more in images than in words. We have graphic or music materials, so we can work a specific topic. We support these on images, and we have a special orientation depending on, on the topic, breastfeeding, safe sleep, sleeping time, and there are other some micro aspects regarding your body position and how you work with every, every family situation. And our basic tool is not the words, but we are careful, respectful, empathic to provide support material. So we place necessary, timely information without a controlling position, but gradually facilitating so when we leave, they can use this. Oh, well, thank you very much. The next question is regarding the same situation uh, based on your field work. Uh, Teresa Contreras Soria says, after giving the bag, which parameters you use to decide family accompaniment with families? How do you design this intervention at individual level? How do you decide how long you will stay with this family? I would like to add if there is how do you find a balance in the solutions or if there is a standardized or individual support? How do you decide on the time? Well, as I was saying, average time, which is more or less one year, a priori, since the first invitation, we say, tell the family that we will be for this time Somehow there is a regulation of intervention. We set goals related to feasible actions. Still, there is a possibility to expand on exceptional situations or that require, as you were saying, a post-enrollment situation. This is about articulation for some benefits and services if after all this time something has happened or a pending benefit, was there perhaps a scholarship for an educational center, but we need to make other actions so this action won't fall after we leave. So we can sustain this a bit further after the temporary process. Is not that everything is closed, but no. There are some situations if somebody uh, died, if there was a tragedy, there are some aspects that imply that it is not right if we withdrew and expand these a few more months to uh, sort these and leave other support systems that the family will use. So on average is that, but we are flexible to adapt to specific situations. 
Okay, well, thank you very much. And now we only have one time for one question. Uh, we have run out of time, so we will share later. Uh, we will share the questions for you and we will post the, the answer. So first, I want to thank the three of you for your time, your valuable presentations and comments. Also, I want to ask the audience for their attention, their questions. And we learned a lot today, I think. I really liked, uh, enjoyed learning about all the uh, public uh, national policies that you presented of Uruguay Crece Contigo program dedicated to families and also regarding Gabriel's comment. I really enjoy the comment that the program with the families will feed back the domestic policy and at a national level you will learn about regarding the work of working with vulnerable families. In the chat you have information regarding the video. I think there were a couple of issues but we will post it also. To have access to the video, we will also post this webinar. And I only need to invite you to our next webinar of this series that will be next week on Thursday. And the Ministry of Social Development from Chile will present the program Chile Grows With You. Chile Crece Contigo. Thank you and good day to you all. Thank you very much. Thank you.